This morning we're going to have a conversation with John and Terry Moyers, and uh, I decided to call it a conversation instead of an interview uh, because it sounds a little better and not as sophisticated. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, John and, and Terry Moyers are very, very successful in their own right as individual artists and collectively as a married couple. And the reason that we decided to do this conversation together is that there's a, a uniqueness to who they are as a married couple. There are numerous married couples in the Western art world who are successful in their own right individually. But quite honestly, there's no other married couple like John and Terry who happen to be in the same shows, the Frida West, the Autry, and many of the gallery shows. And I thought it would be interesting for you as collectors to get to know them as individuals, uh, you know, knowing about their career before they got married, and then once they got married, and whatever trials and tribulations they went, went through when they first got married, and the positives, and maybe if there was any challenges as being a married artist couple throughout their career. So that's what our conversation is all about. So this, if you didn't happen to know, this is John, and this is Terry. <laughs> Just in case it was, you know. Little... And I'd like to start with, with Terry. Just going back to the beginning, if you would, Terry, just tell us the beginning of your career, how you got started, and you know some of the challenges that you went to as a young beginning artist before you met this guy. I'll do my best. Can you hear me? No. 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 It doesn't seem to be working. You know, we got a new system. Okay. And I think we need another new system. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Brad. Yeah, it, it, we're hearing you through that. It's just that we added a second mic, oh. and consequently, it, it's uh, not projecting like we would like. Okay. So I'll try to it. also speak loudly. Okay. <laughs> um, I uh, grew up in Canada. Um, I was born in Vancouver, but lived most of my life in Calgary, Alberta, with a short stint in Windsor, Ontario when I was young, but mostly Calgary in the West by the Rocky Mountains, which I love. Um, anyway, uh, I was sort of an anomaly. Nobody, there, there are no, um, you know, representational, like flat artists, that sounds odd. Uh, there was some music in my family. Uh, people played piano, organ. My grandfather played clarinet and uh, conducted the church choir, things like that. But no um, uh, painting or sculpture or anything. So I was, people didn't really understand me or where this came from, but we're supportive. My mom was a single mom for a lot of my young life, and um, so it was tough for her. She, uh, we never had any money, da da da. But uh, she did everything she could to support me and try to understand uh, what I was all about. Because all I ever wanted to do was draw. I mean, I would beg her to tell me things to draw, and I always wanted paper. And that's all I can remember since I was since I can remember anything was I wanted to draw. And so I've never wanted to do anything else. Um, and luckily, you know, I mean, just I was very fortunate in, in that things kind of, uh, although it was tough lots of times, I mean, it was. It, it, it's not easy doing what we do, especially starting out. Um, but things worked out. And in 1979, I met this guy at a place called the Okanagan Game Farm in Penticton, British Columbia. And it was kind of a very special thing that happened uh, in British Columbia. The, the great artist Robert Lougheed, whom I know many of you uh, have heard of, uh, was a, a mentor to us and uh, a teacher. And he was just an incredible painter. He was an artist's artist. And uh, luckily, we both uh, knew Bob, and he, we met, I first met him on a trip going to the, this uh, game farm in Penticton, and Bob Lougheed and a Canadian painter, Clarence Telenius, both got together, had this idea that they could get a group of artists 
to come together to this game farm in Canada and paint from life every day for a month. And there's, there was no, uh, no idea of actually selling the work. We, we as young students, they invited a few of, uh, of students, you know, and they, they didn't charge. Uh, it wasn't a workshop. It was just that we were going to paint alongside these incredible painters, John Clymer, uh, uh, Paul Strissick, uh, Ken Riley, names you've heard of, and we were, we were there. We painted alongside these terrific artists, and it was that for me was when I first went to the game farm. I actually went the year before. John came in 1979. The first one was 1978, and when I walked into this big lodge at the game farm, after not knowing. Uh, you know, how to go ahead with this career I wanted to have. Uh, and it was like an epiphany. I knew finally I found what I had been looking for because in Canada, I went to art school and all they wanted was people to do modern art. I would turn and draw, we'd go to the zoo and draw animals and they would, I would draw the elephant or whatever and I would get criticisms back that said, this is too real, abstract it. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> and that's not what I wanted to do. And finally went to the game farm, and then we'll go from there. Um, yeah, well, um, <laughs> well so, so uh, my, um, before I met Terry, uh, I grew up in an artistic household. My dad was an artist, he was an illustrator, and then he went into fine art. and. Um, Grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, my dad was one of the early members of the Cowboy Artists of America. So I grew up with all around all, all those guys and everything. So um, that that's all I ever wanted to do is be an artist. And even my dad tried to talk me out of it, even though he was an artist. I, I still can't figure that one out. But, uh, he, kept telling me, son, he says, this is a hard way to make a living. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. I, I, um, yeah, it's just what I always wanted to do. And, uh, so anyway, so I ended up at the game farm, met Terry there, and, and then... Uh, well, you were able to meet Bob. Yeah, oh yeah, what? well, my dad, uh, I realized, my dad, um, he, he was, there was a group of uh, cowboy painters, like in the 50s and 60s, and pretty much all those guys painted out of, the, out of their head. They painted, you know, their life that they remembered and everything, and, you know, like, like Fitman and um, Beeler, and I don't know, there's a whole bunch of, uh, Johnny Hampton, Charlie Guy, my dad, all these guys were, you know, kind of out of the same school. And so my dad realized that, um, that if I wanted to learn how to paint, he needed to get me you know, in touch with Robert Lottie. So he called, I remember sitting there while he couldn't call Bob. He said, I got this knucklehead who thinks he wants to be an artist. And I was wondering if I could bring him up there and introduce him. I was like, I don't know, I was like maybe 17, 16, 17 years old. So then, and I didn't know, I never even heard of painting out or anything. So we went up there and visited with Bob, and Bob said, that, John, I want you to uh, paint 30 paintings, and paint one a day for 30 days, and come see me. And I think he thought, well, I'll see if this guy shows up. Uh, I called him 30 days later and uh, showed up with 30 paintings. And so then it just went from there. But I went, I went to art school in California for a couple of years, but, but I ultimately ended up back in New Mexico because I wanted to study with Bob. So. And then Bob invited you to paint. Yeah. 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 Very good. So then you guys ended up getting married. Yeah, in 1982. Okay. And by then the game farm had kind of petered out. We kept we still uh, went up for a couple years after that, but Bob passed away in 1982. And that was, that was rough. 
So you know, as you as you joked, and as, you know, all the artists who are sitting here realize that you know being an artist is not that necessarily easy, and uh, selling is not necessarily that easy. But uh, at, the, at the beginning, what were some of the challenges that you faced as young artists with not that much money in your pockets, uh, as far as being together uh, and, and working together? What were some of the challenges you faced? Well, I think you just hit on it, Dan. Um, like no money in our pockets. How so, about studios? I'm sure you had two, each had separate studios, right? Well, when we first got married, we lived, uh, you know, I, I, coming from Canada, uh, moved down to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it's like, oh my God, I, I never wanted to leave Calgary. I loved it. I loved the mountains, and but there I am in Albuquerque. But we moved into John's small apartment for a little while. Not long, and then we found an apartment uh, that had two bedrooms. I think about one bathroom, but it was not much. It was, and we shared a studio in the second bedroom, and we we're always backing into each other. <laughs> and you know, there's always disagreements over music. <laughs> I have to pay. I love music, I, but I'm more classically based, you know, and John was totally country. And that's fine. That's great. But we, you know. Yeah, I think during that time, too, it was actually good to have the same studio because it made us paint outdoors more. Yeah, I still, I don't have many memories of painting in that bedroom, but I have a lot of memories of painting outdoors during that period. Bob was so. a great proponent of painting from life out of doors, and it wasn't as, you know, popular, I guess, I don't know if that's the right word, but it wasn't near, done nearly as much as it is now. Now plain air painting is a, a movement on its own, but back then it, it was, you know, you didn't see as many people painting out yeah. of doors. But I, I should show you, I, here I am with a clicker and I haven't shown one picture. So this, <laughs> let me see now if this will show. Where are we? Where do I aim it, Haley? Um, toward me. Toward you. And it's not working. Maybe we should well, I, think, I think, Haley, maybe you should do it. There you go. There he is. So that's, that's probably at the game farm. <laughs> so isn't it? You know, getting old sucks. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's see if we'll go forward. Maybe you should just stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, John, John is with a friend there holding that um, stone sheet ram. And that's what he looked like when I first met him with the cowboy hat. That's how exactly what he looked like. He's pretty cute. And then maybe you should trade him in. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 trade me in. But anyway, that's you know there he is at the game farm painting, pretty big painting. For, yeah. Yeah. 1530. Way to go. Uh, I always, I always like painting big because I like using big brushes. So. But uh, that I didn't. That wasn't my oh, hat. I had I to borrow the hat that day. Back from Terry because I forgot my hat that day. So that's a picture from 1979 when I. That's the second game farm gathering, but that's what the first time John went, and you can see him. I'm supposed to use this old pointer. That's John. I'm there. That's quite a hat, John. Yeah. It was. A, that's a great hat. He still has it. Yeah. So I'm trying to think. Um, any Love other artists you've done? Oh yeah, there's Bob. Um, I'm gonna make this work. So there's Bob right there. It's Bob Lockie. And I don't know if uh, any of you remember Paul Strisick is there. Um, some of the fellows like Climber and. Uh, uh, Ken Riley and, um, gosh, Harley Brown, people like that. They weren't there this year. I think they were there the previous year. But, um, well, Harley was there, but I don't know why. Yeah, yeah why is he not in the picture? I don't know. Who knows? But uh, Dave Powell's there, Greg McCure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. It's quite a group. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm not sure. Okay, it's going ahead by itself, Haley. Oh. I didn't click it, so I don't know if it's on the timer thing. Um, so, okay, we both, we would, 
always go out to Canada once or twice a year to paint. You know, we uh, do everything we could to make money to just get us up there and live like, you know, hermits when we're up there or something. But, um, but we we have painted up in the Rockies our whole married lives because we love it. And these are just some shots of us painting on location in the mountains. Okay. This is not. Them. And in the snow, <laughs> so that's, which is challenging. That's one of our favorite places. That one before is me above uh, Lake MacArthur. This is Lake O'Hara. And you just can't go in there. You have to reserve it like a year ahead just to go in there. Yeah. But, uh, we love being there. So. This is in Yoho National Park, just the next national park um, from Banff, like next door to Banff National Park. It's all great country. Anyway, oh there we are. See, it's just. Here. So you paint them because you're you're just glad to be there. You paint. Doesn't matter what the weather is, you're gonna paint because you may not be back there for another year. So. What if, what effect does the cold have on the on your paint? Oh, uh, you can with oil paint. You can paint in any kind of weather, but it gets stiffer, obviously. It gets yeah. yeah. Your white will be really stiff. Um, your bones get really stiff. <laughs> One time we were up in, in Yoho and we were uh, on a painting by the side of the road and it was sunny, but it was probably about 15 degrees below zero. And But the sun made it, and there was no wind. So it was doable. But I remember a park ranger driving by and he looked at us and just shook his head. <laughs> like, you people are insane. Yeah, and we were. <laughs> but we had an idea the sun went behind the mountain and got, like within like one minute it was so cold you couldn't paint anymore once the sun went behind the I personally can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and hauling your paints up mountains is something else too. Yeah, Lake McCarthy, you don't drive up to Lake McCarthy, you hike into it. So we used to carry all this stuff in there. Okay. Yeah, what we still do. This is in that same area, uh, that Lake O'Hara region, and this is one of my favorite places. I've painted it so many times. It's called Victoria Falls. And to me, it's just a, a natural composition. It's so beautiful, and um, everything works. And I, hmm. That's kind of a funny photo. Why? Because Terry did that painting in the studio, and she took it all the way up there and put it on the <laughs> It's not true. <laughs> you know, you asked him to come along. <laughs> well, he, he paid me to, oh, to sit in, so I'm sorry. Thanks. Oh, okay. So here we are, and we love to paint with other painters. There's Josh Elliott up in that. that is that that O'Hara? Where, where were we, Josh? Josh, oh, where are you? Raise your hand, Josh. That's Bo Lake. Lake. That's Bo Lake. Lake. Yeah. 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 Josh was schooling me. Yeah. He Show was, off. Yeah, it always makes me mad when I set up next to that guy because he's so good. But anyway, that's Josh. Oh, yeah. And, oh, this is Hawaii. Then we love to travel and paint, too. We painted. We love Hawaii. We try to go about once a year, you know, depending if we have time and so that's, and you're usually, you know, often sitting on a lava rock, and believe me, that, you feel that later. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, and often we work in watercolors when we travel now. And it's good. It keeps you fresh. It makes you think in a different way. You know, you have to, uh, it, it's just a slightly different process and way of going about it. And that's, that's healthy and good for what we do. Yeah, you almost have to approach everything backwards from oil. So yeah, it makes you, it makes me better when I get back, you know, from a trip using watercolors. I draw better, I paint better. So yeah, it's definitely a good thing. So let's see what's next here. Oh, this is in Rhonda, Spain. Oh, God, I love Rhonda. It was so cool. And that's called the New Bridge, which is really old. You should see the old bridge. But it's uh, it's a great spot. Rhonda's one of the white pueblos they call them up in these hills in southern Spain, and it's just gorgeous. Yeah. 
Terry, qu a question for you guys. What impact, if any, has one of your careers had on the other? Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think uh, it's, it kind of ebbs and flows. I think sometimes, um, I don't know, good things happen to Terry, and then, you know, I'm kind of just coasting, and then vice versa. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, we just, I don't know, it just works. I don't know. There's no real answer. I, it's just, uh, we're always flying by the seat of our pants and just trying to keep doing what we're doing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, it's true. Um, I mean, a lot of this but, stuff you don't think out. You can't, you just, I mean, you have to look back and say, okay, well, there was that. And, um, yeah, it, you know, we influence each other, uh, of course. Uh, we, we critique each other all the time. You know, he comes in and tells me everything I did wrong, and then I get mad at him and fix it. Uh, <laughs> and that kind of thing. But, yeah. So we'll go on with these, and then we'll get through them. All right, so this is in, I think that was Granada? I think that's Granada by the Alhambra, which was fabulous. We were really lucky there. We uh, went to the Alhambra to paint, and um, <laughs> you you know, it's expensive. You have to buy a ticket to go in for the morning, you know, and to, to see part of it, and yeah, another ticket to see the rest of it, and all this stuff. So we were with Kurt, and Kurt Walters and Tom Daly on that trip, and we thought, let's go talk to somebody and see if they'll let us paint inside. And we just wanted to, we thought, oh, we can only photograph whatever and just see it. But we thought, let's just see if they'll let us do any painting. And we had oil paints with us on that trip. And so we went, oh, Kurt and I went around from office to office trying to talk to people who didn't speak a lot of English. In southern, southern Spain, it's not as much. Finally found a young man who could speak English, and he went and talked to people for us. And finally, they gave us, John and Kurt and I, not poor Tom, but the three painters, they gave us these badges. We could go in and out of the Alhambra at will for, wow. we could have gone for a whole month, but we were only there for about a week or several days, I can't remember. But um, at will, we could go in and out and paint. And they get like, thousands of people every day through the Alhambra. And it's, you know, a fragile place and they were, they, it turned out they were fabulous to us. Wow. Yeah, that was uh, amazing. So, so I don't, well this is, actually this is in Cordoba, this one. You know, and people are very respectful. They, that, you know, they've been really good. This, there's Kurt, and this is all our stuff. We're about to move on from Sevilla, I think, and maybe go home. But oh my gosh, the luggage. <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with Kurt and Tom over the years on different trips. Oh, yeah, that's what I want. This is in La Mancha. The, we were tilting windmills. Just and uh, well, La Mancha's on the left, I'm sorry, the others are in Sevilla. Yeah, so. Uh, Venice, and we're off to Venice for three weeks, the day after we get home from Venice. <laughs> so we can't wait, can't wait. Uh, have your subject matters changed much over the years? And if so, why? Um, I, I don't think so, I think that um, maybe our designs have changed and the way we design paintings. Like I, I'm doing a lot of like uh, bigger scale things within the um, uh, canvas or whatever. But I think our technique and everything's been our approach is pretty much the same, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, I think we're evolving, but maybe not technically. Technique-wise? Well, I think technique, I think I have it, technique changed a fair bit. But I think I'm kind of back and forth. I feel, you because know, I like to tell people I'm easily bored, so I bounce around a bit. I'm sorry, I don't think the same thing all the time. Or, But 
there is there is a, um, a continuity if you really look at the body of work, you know. Also, we both started when we started out. We were doing primarily landscape and wildlife, mm -hmm. so we have changed a bit. Yeah. And I still love painting animals. And uh, but this so is you'll, uh, you'll see. The one thing I think that's important for all artists to do, because it happened to us, and you need to pass it on. But uh, if you get a chance to the artist out there to help young people, it's very important. This is Hannah, she's sitting right there. But she's uh, been working with us for over 10 years now, and she's become a very good artist. But, uh, she goes painting with us, and she. Uh, helps us with all the technical stuff, like getting into our Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, operating any kind of technology. So, uh, yeah, because we're both yeah. terrible. Her that. parents share her with us. Yeah. So anyway, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, John, you were a member of the Cowboy Artists of America for 16 years, from 1994 to 2010. Mm -hmm. And Tara, you are a... Uh, but a nominated an inductee to the National Congo Hall of Fame in Fort Worth. Additionally, you are both members of the Creed West, which is the premier Western art show in the country at the National Conway and Western Heritage Museum. And I'd like to begin my next question with Carrie. In 2012, you received the show's highest honor, which is uh, the Creed West Purchase Award, and you won that award for your painting called La Luz de Fer which should be up on the screen. It's right there. Is it there? Who it is. Yeah. Faye, I'm sorry. That's In 2012, I'm sorry, what did receiving the pre West Purchase Award mean to you, and what impact, if any, did it have for your career at that point in time? Well, of course, that, that, it was a tremendous honor. And uh, I mean, I still have to pinch myself, because that's not I mean, that's such, it's not an insignificant thing. It's, it's a major, major achievement. And, and I'm, I, was, I was absolutely surprised. I always thought, oh, people must know, you know, before they announce these awards, they must know they're going to, I had no idea. So it was, it was just amazing. And uh, career-wise, of course, it's a, a major feather in your cap. Um, I don't know that I noticed a huge difference, really, but but it's it's just uh, I mean it's it was an honor for I think because I'm a woman and it's tough. It's that's a whole other conversation. And uh, but I was only the second woman woman to win the Pre West Award in the history of NAWA and Pre West. So that was it was a tremendous honor and I will always treasure that. So Great. I, I love going to the show. It's Good. fun. <laughs> and John, during your sixteen years as a member of the Cowboy Artists, you received thirty awards. And so what did being a member of the CAs and receiving all those awards and what effect did that have on your career? Well, um, being a member of the CA was a, like just a huge honor. I mean, and all the guys are great guys. And, and, uh, yeah, so I was very fortunate to be involved with that. And of course, you know, I, I kind of followed in my dad's footsteps. So growing up, it's like, man, I want to be a CA member. So, uh, so it was it was good. And um, you know, when I look back on the CA, I don't don't really remember the awards. I mean, it was great, and da, 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 but I remember, you know, all the guys and the shows, and, and it, it was a great opportunity to show you, showcase your best work and everything. So it was good. And, uh, but uh, yeah, it's just, I got to a point where I was, I kind of felt like it was time to move on. And, and that's what I did, so uh, yeah. So. Because of all the success that both of you have enjoyed over the years, I'm sure every now and then, and, and you mentioned Hannah, you, there have to be artists, young artists who come up to you and say, you know, do you have any advice? What do you think I should do? When that happens, what do you say to them? Besides, you're crazy, don't get into the business. Yeah, well, that's the first thing you say. Uh, no, it's just, um, I remember just, Hannah was in a, a workshop we're given at the Cowboy Hall, 
2012, and uh, you know we had I don't know like it was a big class. There was a lot of people there, but and we said I, we brought this plastic human skull with us and said it down said because we want you want to see where everybody's at. And so said draw this skull, and uh, everybody in there was like you know in their 30s, 40s, and so um, but there's this one high school kid. And uh, I walked around and I thought, holy cow, this, this girl has something special, you know, and she did. She did the best drawing in the class and so on. Uh, she just, uh, she just had what it, I mean, she did. Like, you can tell right away. And, we, and she seemed to want to hang around us, and that's, yeah. that was cool. But anyway, <laughs> so then when the class ended at the end of the week, we, your mom was there, too. We said, if you ever want to come out and study with us, you're welcome to. So she came out. And she lived on and off with us for, I don't know, several years. And uh, we finally had to kick her out. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hannah still comes. She still <laughs> comes and stays with us back out. Anyway, guys, watch out for Hannah Harper. She's going to do great things. Isn't that a great name, though? Yeah. Hannah Harper, it has yeah. a ring. Yeah, she signed one time. She signed a painting Harper, and I called her on the phone and said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Do you have a great name? Use it." So she yeah. started putting the hand up there. Hmm. So, um, what, what 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 else do you do for your pastime, or, or is art your whole life? No. I mean, yes, it is. Actually, it is pretty much our whole life. But, um, gosh, uh, our son, Josh, is uh, he, wa he wants to be a filmmaker. And that is also not an easy road. And oh my gosh, so we, we support Josh. I go to a lot of movies, screenings, all kinds of stuff with him. And his, his wife, May, who many of you might have number of you might have met um, and uh, also we the kids and I share a love of Disney and Josh is a, a probably one of the biggest Star Wars collectors and <laughs> uh, uh, what do you call it um, <laughs> so I do a lot of Star Wars things with them and it's really fun I get a kick out of it and we enjoy it. But I, I have, um, I like to collect old Disney Anna and I have a lot of, you know, pretty cool things. And so that's kind of my little extracurricular thing. What do you do? Yes. Well, you do so I, I don't know, I like, I paint, like we paint every day. I mean, most days we don't even know what the day of the week is because we just paint. But, um, but I like a distraction. I always like I used to make jewelry, and then I did leather work, and then I, I always have this distraction. So I'd paint till like three or four in the afternoon, or and then go home and do something else because I just can't go sit or like I just have this energy, nervous energy. So now, I, when I was a kid, I used to make arrowheads and um, got pretty good at it. But now, so I started that up again a few years ago on it. And, so I come home and make arrowheads. All you can hear outside, if if he's not painting, is chip, 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 chip. And actually, he's really good. I wish we had some pictures because I can't believe what he makes. Wow. Well, yeah. So you know, that's what I mean. So I, I and it's kind of a distraction for me. It gets my mind. I need something to get my mind off. I can imagine. Yeah. So uh, so that's what I do. And it's like it's kind of like I used to fish a lot, but I can't fish in all. It's kind of like, a, you know, you're just focused on the river and casting your fly out there and stuff, and there's no thinking that goes on except watching the water. The same with making an arrowhead, so uh, it's a good distraction for me. Good. Final question, this is a lengthy one. The, the both of you have been involved with Western fine art for many, many years, and uh, over the last 10, 15 years, we've all seen an awful lot of changes in the Western art market with uh, an awful lot of brick and mortar galleries kind of going by the wayside with a lot of uh, galleries becoming virtual, with technology becoming more and more invasive. And uh, at the same time, we're seeing, seeing a new generation of collectors 
with different interests, different tastes. With that being said, given your long and successful career and from your perspective as artist, uh, and with the changes that you, you have seen, uh, what are your, your thoughts and from your perspective, what are your feelings about where things are with respect to Western art? I, th I actually think we're in a really good place. I think for a while, I don't know, I, a while ago, I'm, it, it, I think Western art was floundering a bit, but it seems to be having a bit of a renaissance. I mean, I, I'm, and maybe I should just label it representational art, I think is, is pretty healthy. Getting, it's, there's some really terrific painters and artists up there, sculptors. Um, there, there's, I, I think it's in a healthy place. I think there's some stuff going on that worries me. There's a lot of people, there are some people doing things that, I'm, I'm a traditionalist. I like, I mean, we've tried to be honest in our, the way we work all our lives. Um, uh, we start, you know, we draw with charcoal. Uh, we. We, we don't project anything, we're not using Photoshop, we don't paint over gicleade photos, we don't do any of those things, and we're pretty, that's what we believe in, that's how we work. Um, I wish, um, I don't care what people do, they can do all of those things, just, just tell people that's what you do, and if they like that, great, terrific, good for you. But, um, I, it really bothers me when I see some of these things that I know aren't maybe exactly the way they look. They were produced, you know, that way. Um, but that's just the way I feel. One thing I would really love to see, there are, you know, there's a lot of Western art shows and they're terrific and it's, it's a great subject matter and we all love it. But I would love it if, what if, if we could show, like at, at some of the museum shows, maybe you could put in four or five pieces, but it, it would be fun, I think, if we could put in one piece that maybe isn't, it could be anything. And uh, I think uh, it would really reinvigorate some of these shows, something a little different, something everyone travels now. What if we could put in a picture from Venice or from Spain or from Hawaii? Well, I do put Hawaii pictures in, never mind. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's what I feel. Yeah, I, I think that the Western, since I was a kid and my dad was doing it, it really has changed a lot. It really has. And, um, and I think it's, changed in a lot of ways it's changed for the worse but in a lot of ways it's way better you know it's kind of it's like anything it's like there's good things and bad things but i think if my dad came along now and was trying to sell the work like he used to sell a lot of art but if he came along now he i think he'd struggle because but he'd probably also adapt to what he needed to do but but then there's guys like uh like ned jacob they really had a modern, contemporary feel to them. And he's a great designer and everything, and they're authentic. So I think a guy like Ned could make it now. He could, he made it then, he could make it now. Um, it's just, uh, but I think that ultimately, it's, it is going to a more contemporary look. You know? But when your dad started too, there were far fewer, there were fewer galleries and fewer artists making a living from what yeah. they did yeah. there just were and now you know it's, it's there are many more venues and ways for people to actually you know do what we do and, and get ahead doing it um still takes a lot of work and a lot of talent but i think that there are more opportunities for people now yeah but anyway, yeah, but you know, change is good. Change is good, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah you certainly can't stay still. That, that's, that's for certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So I remember one time, this is a funny story. And I don't tell too many people the story, but it was uh, maybe, two, I think it was 2008, I did. I'd just come back from London and seen these 
big portraits at the portrait gallery. They're like huge heads and stuff. And I thought, I'm not going to do that. So anyway, for Skinny Show, I did this big head. And they, um, they were Jim Ballinger said, no, you gotta, did you see that side of the building? And I walked around, and it was a 35 foot long you know, poster draped over the building on that painting. You know, for to promote the CA show, I thought, wow, that's cool. But anyway, then in the next year, I did that big painting that's over at the museum here of that uh, in American guy with the flag and everything. And uh, I remember I walked into the CA show and that painting was hanging there, and there were a couple of CA guys, and I overheard them say, say, uh, I think that Moyers has lost his damn mind. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, that, it was at that point that I, I thought, you know, I, I thought um, the one, like, there's almost like a Western art formula, like, you know, I call it like the Charlie Russell deal, where you do the courses and figures, the same scale in the landscape that's been done since Charlie Russell did it. Everybody's doing that. Like everything's the same scale. And I thought, man, it's time for something. Mm -hmm. So that's what I might, of course, so maybe I did lose my mind. Maybe Which is a good it. thing. Yeah, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I think change is good. Change is good. Good, thank you. Any questions from the audience? Ginger. <laughs> We have tricks. We have, yeah, we have <laughs> wet painting carriers. That's one of the things that's great about watercolors now is we, uh, uh, they, dry. they just dry, you put them in, you, they just put all the, you cut them out of the watercolor block, you just stack them, just carry them on the plane, you go home. But oils are more difficult. So, so, so you, do you do mainly watercolors when you travel? Well, no. we have been, yeah, okay. like yeah. the last maybe I mean, 10 years or so. We do take oils. Uh, the problem is now when you fly with oils, you certainly can't take thinners. Uh, somebody said you can take Gamsol. Yeah. But it, it's, and then trying to find thinners in <laughs> southern Spain, it's called, uh, what's it called? It's white. Like white. white Spirits. Yeah, and, and try to think. I mean, we buy stuff and open a tin of something we thought was paint thinner, and it's like lacquer or something. Lacquer, so, thinner, paint, uh, yeah, paint we'd paint often paper. send send poor Tom Daly off to find paint thinner. <laughs> Tom was great. He'd bring us. But, yeah, with two artists, especially, it's difficult traveling with all these wet paintings, you know. Terry paints like four a day. Oh, so that's not even true. <laughs> he, he does that, and I'm lucky if I get a couple. Yeah, you know, he's no, Mr. Sweeney. Yeah. But we figured out, we've had different ways of doing that. We could, uh, some will be dry, you know, depending how long you've been on the road. And so we'll have, but some are still wet or tacky. So if you stack them and take matchsticks, you know, wooden matches, the squared off kind, and you put them in the corners of the paintings and stack them and tape them tightly. And you know, we have all these little tricks and you could carry them as a bundle and they usually make it home fine. But no, it's challenging, it is. Great, thank you. Oh, one more question. I was just wondering about the Basha Gallery, if you folks either had a relationship with that or for over the years? Yeah, we both have work in that collection. And um, yeah, Eddie was a great guy. I mean, we all miss him, of course. But um, yeah, Eddie collected quite a few pieces of ours. Oh, sure. I think I have one. I don't, yeah. I don't know if I have more than that. Yeah, but you I think you do. But anyway, um, yeah, we were represented in that collection. All right, we're going to have to cut it short because we have to get set up for John Coleman who will be coming on shortly. We're going to have finally a, a 10 or 15 minute break to get set up for John. And then we'll be back here to see an incredible sculpture demonstration by John Coleman. Thank you. Thank you.